of my friends said that I look like an extra in Euphoria with this makeup, and honestly, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing an old-fashioned book haul. Yes! <laughs> so if you can see all those books behind my back, these are all the books that I've acquired d during the, you know, our global lockdown. <laughs> so these are six months worth of books. I don't usually buy tons and tons of books. I read a lot of ebooks. I'm trying to get into audiobooks, but it's kind of a hot and cold relationship. So there are more than 20 books here. I think that we, we, we are kind of cornering 30. So let's get into this. So most of these books you probably have seen already in one of my videos, like previous videos. So I'm going to link it like in the cards and then you can go watch if I gave like a more detailed synopsis in those videos. Uh, the first one is Dune by Frank Herbert, which is getting a movie adaptation and um, I watched the trailer and as much as I want to love it I don't know is it is it a pretentious thing to say from someone who did like cinematography I was in a cinematography club for many years and now YouTube um, and I am a movie like lover I love going to the cinema and going into like the background the backstage of the movies um, is it pretentious of me to say that a trailer looks very American? Well, only Hollywood could make a movie like Dune, like the one I saw in the trailer. I'm just gonna, like, say that right off the bat. This is a very ugly copy of Dune, I don't really like it. I really wanted, like, the fancy one, but it was $30, said it was in English, and this is a very difficult book to read, even in Italian, so I wanted, like, the Italian copy. Then we have Un Amore Senza Fine by Scott Spencer or Endless Love. I've talked about this in my five stars prediction. I still haven't like started it. I really want to though, even though it has a lot of mixed reviews and I've uh, researched and it has two movies adaptation, one from an Italian like, um, director and they're both shit. So I am kind of nervous right now, but um, this is one of those like all-time, all-consuming love stories that um, creates such a deep trauma in the protagonist and the love interest that spills into the family. I'm nervous! <laughs> Next, one of the books that you will be seeing in my Mamma Mia-thon and book -a -thon, um wrap-up because, you know, uh, I've chose this for these two readathons and it's uh, Rendezvous with Rama by uh, Arthur C. Clarke. Most of these books that I'm going to show you I've already read, which is wonderful because my TBR is already very, very long. Um, and yes, I've read this and you can see those two tags are one. The first one is the author talking about polyamorous relationship, which was kind of wonderful. Uh, it was talked about like it was something very normal. There is a relationship between two men and a woman and it's described as being very equilateral, a very... Uh, loving relationship and I was so happy and then we get to the, the, the famous paragraph that I posted on Twitter in which I'm going to read it to you the, the, the most important part Some women Commander Northern had decided long ago should not be allowed aboard ship Weightlessness did things to their breasts that were too damn distracting and it's never brought up again. This is the only paragraph in which the author talks about women because there are many women in the ship, even in position of power. And I was so, so baffled by this because why would you put this into this? I am so angry because this would have been such a great, fantastical book. If not for this tiny paragraph, I'm so mad, so mad. One of my most anticipated books and one of that I chose also for the Mamma Mia Thon and Bukapothon is Red Shirts by John Scalzi. This, as I said in my Goodreads review, really cemented the idea that John Scalzi is a huge nerd and I'm a huge nerd. I'm a huge Star Trek fan. He is a huge Star Trek fan and also like Battlestar Galactica and all those other kind of movies and TV shows. And 
it was such a delight to read because this is so dorky and nerdy and if you love like the behind the scenes of making a sci-fi series especially like i don't know shitty ripoff ones this is, was so fun <laughs> it was so funny it, it, it's a lot of things it gets into all kinds of directions so you can say maybe that the, the plot is going kind of all over the place but i enjoyed it so much i this is my kind of book this talks about if you know in, in star trek i've said in my um tbr red shirts in star trek are the one that dies they always die because the main characters cannot die uh, so the red shirts in this novel um start to realize that there's something going on because they are the only one that die and there are some main characters who never die, never get illnesses, so they're kind of getting suspicious. Another book that was in my five stars prediction is Normal People by Sally Rooney. Beautiful cover. I really want to watch the TV show, uh, but before I want to, yeah, of course, read the book. This talks about two people who have a very deep kind of relationship, like deep feelings about each other, but they there's something wrong and they can't really get together like normal people would so it, it's very interesting for me because everybody says this is like one of the best books they've read all year so i i am um, i have high expectation for this then let's get to the dumbest purchase of the year shall we shall we we shall because um this is the way of kings and i bought part two and not part one because i'm a dumbass and I didn't know that it was split in two in this edition. But I I saw the picture of Henry Cavill reading this book and recommended it. And I was like, I I I have to. How could I not? I talked about at length about how I love Brandon Sanderson's fantasies and hate, despise his uh, sci-fi. So this is fantasy, high fantasy, so I'm very excited. Once I get to part one, like, once I purchase part one. God damn it! Another five star prediction. I know there are a lot. Uh, this is Il Vikingo in Technicolor or Technicolor Time Machine. This talks about a director, very, very young, that is going nowhere with his career. So he hires a mad scientist to go back in time to get some real footage from the older times. So it, this is crazy. The cover is crazy. I bought this at a newspaper kiosk where I just buy this very cheap sci-fi books i think it's great i i read the the first chapter it, it's hilarious it's great i i really want to read this <laughs> okay th this is one of my most anticipated books to purchase because this was recently translated in italian this is brevemente risplendiamo sulla terra by ocean Blanc. The original title is on Earth, we are briefly gorgeous, which is very difficult to say for an Italian person. This is, I don't know, I was just drawn to the title and the synopsis so much. Uh, this is a letter from the son to his mother. This talks about war, this talks about family drama and grief. And I think this will be a very touching book and it's written in letter format, which is not something that you see as often and i don't know i think this will be very heartfelt so one of my favorite booktubers is theresa i'm going to link her channel down below because she is an amazing booktuber she talks about sapphic books a lot and her recommendations are great usually so i decided to purchase her favorite book for a video that i'm doing this is the falling in love montage by sarah smith isn't it so pretty? This is a sapphic romance, like a sapphic contemporary romance, and I'm, I'm just, I don't know. I am so happy to read about books that are contemporary and sapphic and that are not like centered uh, around the trauma of being uh, maybe a lesbian, maybe a bisexual people, just a very cute love story with some drama, but it's, I don't know. I'm so excited. I really want to love this as much as Theresa does. So, yeah. Now, I have a very mysterious book that my mom picked up. It was secondhand. Uh, it was like on the, um, like the book crossing experiment that we are doing here in Italy of uh, putting your books on windows wheels and on bicycles, like the, the baskets on the bicycles for everybody to read and book cross. Um, this is Respiro or Breath 
by Tim Winton. I know nothing about this book. The, the synopsis tells you nothing. Is there anyone who has read this book and can tell me if it's good or not? What, what, what is it about? Because I don't know if I want to go into this blind and be like this very mysterious and exciting experiment or I don't know. The cover? I don't know. It, uh, mm, mm. No. This is a book that I really wanted to love and I'm halfway through it and I'm... It's pure nothingness. This is an Italian book called Tutto Chiede Salvezza by Daniele Mencarelli. This has won a very prestigious prize here in Italy. It's called Premio Strega. Uh, the title translates to Everything Requires Salvation, kind of, loosely translated. Uh, it talks about this very young boy who suffers from anger issues and we don't really know what, uh, but he has mental health issues in the 90s in Italy and he goes to a hospital for a week to get a diagnosis and he meets other people with many kinds of pathologies for the time like there is um, a very effeminate and gay man i still have to go through this but he sometimes refers to himself as a man and sometimes as a woman so i don't know if it's like a case of fluidity of identity or he's uh, non-binary but in the 90s these terms weren't really, you know, in a medical field overall. And um, this is pure nothingness. It tells you nothing. Uh, it, it doesn't talk about anything. I'll still finish it. I don't know, maybe it has like a banger of an ending. But for this, like right now, two stars. Ugh. Second pile of books because I have no self control. If you've seen my Switzerland vlog, where I go and meet my dad, uh, you know that I bought a couple of books and one of them was Felix Ever After by Kissing Calendar. I still haven't read this, I will. I'm very excited, this talks about a trans boy in high school and I think this will be a very impactful read for me because, I don't know, uh, I sometimes get the feel of a book and I'm like, this is going to be a very happy and impactful experience for me and it usually is, so. Yes. Now, I have a book from an author that I really, really adore, but it's not for everybody. Um, this is Uno strano paese, or A strange country, or in the original, uh, Un étrange pays, by Muriel Barbary, who is the author of The Elegance of the Hedgehog, and many other books that are very, like, purple prose, is that how it's called? Like, it, it feels like you're reading poetry, but it's prose. It's very dense, very intricate with beautiful metaphors, uh, very flowery writing, and if it's not the thing for you, then I, I don't know how much you will love her writing, but I enjoyed every book that she has put out. This is the newest one and I've read all of them, except from this one. <laughs> As always, there is kind of like a magical feel to it. So this, this has elves, I believe in it. It, it. it talks about death and life and the torments of a new civilization uh, imposing in, onto an uh, older one. Uh, so it's a very philosophical book and I, I actually am very excited. I have a blog in which I read the fifth uh, season among other books, but that book blew me away. That was such I still think about it to this day, about it, it was so amazing, such an incredible experience reading it. So I bought the sequel <laughs> immediately after. This is the Il Portale degli Obelischi or The Obelisk Gate by Anke Jemison. When I tell you, I am so excited that I cannot get myself to like actually start this because I don't know. So many people told me that this is not on par with the first book, so I'm kind of scared, but I really want to know where the story is going because it's so interesting, the world is so intricate and detailed. Can somebody like please in the comments tell me, like yell at me, start the obelisk gate, <laughs> because I have to. My grandma, who is a sweetheart, I love her, ciao nonna, questo video è anche per te perché c'è il tuo libro, uh, she bought me a book about an artist that I really love. There's one of his works here in Venice in one of the houses that is crumbling down here in Venice. 
Um, this is Bangsi. It, it, it's wonderful because it has like text but also these really cute drawings and she bought it for me thinking about me. It was so sweet. Grazie nonna. Ti voglio un sacco di bene. Another book that I bought in Switzerland is Cette fois peut-être by Casey West or maybe this time. This was a really cute contemporary novel about a girl who works as a like she makes flower arrangements for parties and weddings and she meets this boy who is the new chef's son yeah the new chef's son and this chef is very famous like kind of like Gordon Ramsay it's kind of like the same personality and he is the son is very cocky but he's also really sweet so this was very cute I've already read this it was in French this is in French so I'm actually really proud of myself for reading this so there is a channel that I really like, a booktube channel, uh, that is called Books with Leo. And she has done, I, I believe, in the bisexual book talk that she created, uh, that I've also done, like, link up here. Um, she recommended a book that is called, she, she described it as gay in space, and I was like, uh, yes, of course. Uh, this is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Can you, like, this is the ugliest cover I have ever seen because you, you cannot see this, but it's so fucking blurry. Like they took an image and I blow it out and it was not in HD, not in HD. Uh, in Italian, it's just like the long way, lungo viaggio. The only thing I know about this is gay in space and I'm here for that. This is one of the books that really disappointed me this year. So uh, I think you'll see it in one of my videos that I will do at the end of the year, like my most disappointing reads or like my most, hate, most hated reads. Um, this is The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. I really wanted to like love this to death because this talks about um, astronauts family and the whole like drama that is going on between these families of these future astronauts. Uh, they have to go to Mars, so there is a Mars mission going on. There is Carl and then there is, I believe, Leon and then they fall in love. But it was, it was such like insta-love, the writing was kind of all over the place. It, it felt like he was skipping paragraphs between lines. So I was like, where is the description? Where are, where are we going? What are we doing? The concept? Amazing. Execution? Wah, wah. Okay, so I'm so excited about this book. This is um, the last winner of the Hugo Prize, so huge. This is Pechino Pieghevole by Ha Jin Fong. Um, the, not the original title, but the translation of the original title is The Depth of loneliness. Yeah, this talks about technology and how it will transform our cities and the people who live in them. So, Pechino Pieghevole means, I think, like, pliable Beijing? Pliable Pieghevole. I'm having an English crisis. I just feel it in my guts that this is going to be one of my favorite books because this is a very adult and serious sci-fi and I love those and I don't know, I'm so excited. Another book that I bought in Switzerland is this part of a series. This is very cheesy, but it helps me with my French. It's also very cute. This is Le Patissier de Mes Rêves, volume three by Pakafumi Nanatsuki. Um, this is a translated novel from Japanese about a boy who really wants to be the top chef of Japan and a girl who really likes sweets. This is just very cute, very simple French, so it was perfect for me to practice the language. So I cannot wait to finish this. I'm like uh, this into this, so I really want to finish this. I have now one of the only graphic novel of this bunch, uh, one of the. Uh, this is Il Mare Verticale by Brian Freschi and Ilaria Urbinati. This is an Italian graphic novel, the title translates to The Vertical Sea. This is a story about self-discovery and chronic illness. It, it, it's a very, I don't know, quiet graphic novel. The, the drawings are very like pastel and very beautiful, you can see that. Uh, it's a very Italian graphic novel. I can tell you that this, this could not have been like made by anybody else but two Italian people. It, it's very sweet, it's very delicate in the way that it approaches loneliness and you know when you feel the, the silence 
it's so deafening in your house that it pricks you in your ears. This talks about that. I still have to finish this uh, because I like started it today, but I, I already love this to death. I feel really bad talking about Italian books because I know that I really want to recommend it to you, but how can I do that if you do not know Italian? Because 80% of our books, this is uh, a thing that I really want to talk about in a future video, 80% uh, of our books are translated from other countries. We have a very flourishing economy of translators. We, it's kind of an art. Part of writing is also translating uh, for us and we also have a very flourishing literary uh, economy. Can I say that? Like we have so many writers that are Italian and they write in Italian, so it's very beautiful. But also when I when I say like, I really want you to read this because this was very beautiful. And I'm like, this does not count for anyone who doesn't know Italian. <laughs> and I'm so sad, I'm sorry. Another video that I really want to do is a video about my writing because I think this is really, I don't know, if I get in a writing slump, writer's block, is that what it's called? I watch other people's videos about writing. Uh, I love the video that Mick did, I'm going to link it down below. And then I love uh, Adele Marie's videos and Kate Kavanaugh. I'm going to link their channel down below. I think they're amazing and very motivating. And the book that I'm writing right now, the book that I'm writing right now, so pretentious. What I'm writing about right now, it talks about heavily influenced uh, by theatre and the writing of screenplays. So I bought a book about writing screenplays because if I did not know how to do that, how can I describe this in a book? So this is part of my research. This is La Cineggiatura, so the screenplay, by Sid Field. I hope this will help me. It, uh, it has already like it has so many like metaphors in physics and all other study fields, so it's very interesting. I really like this book so far. So, as it is apparent from this channel, I am a huge Star Trek fan. I say this in every video I make. I am so sorry for those who do not like or do not watch Star Trek. I started to read the novels and there are some novels that are like great sci-fi, like such great sci-fi. Um, so I have a few that I've bought in these trying times. Let me start with the most recent read that I've read. Uh, this is Star Trek The Vulcan Academy Murders by Jim Laura. And yes, I have tabbed everything that I loved. Also, almost all of Star Trek books are written by women, which, which is so wonderful to see because these are very old. And, you know, sci-fi written by women wasn't the common thing uh, in sci-fi, so it's wonderful to see. This is so old of a book. Love this. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of like Scooby-Doo. Uh, in space. Then I have two books which are very very spe special. Special. Uh, one I read, uh, the other one not. This is Star Trek The New Voyages and this is Star Trek The New Voyages 2. Now I cannot say who is the writer because there are many. These are anthologies written by fans. Isn't it like such a great idea? This is, this is fan fiction published fan fiction and the original actors for the TOS series have done like preface like they introduce the stories and they, their words are so lovely they talk about diversity they talk about how the series impacted our culture pop culture and how all these people were greatly impact, impacted by Star Trek you know um, especially Leonard Nimoy's and Nichelle Nichols' uh, speech about diversity it was so great. The stories were kind of, some were great, some were not so great, but I, I still think that like published fan fiction for Star Trek, this is real, like this is it. And then with this whole lot, I had in my wish list. I had it, I have not ordered this. It was in my wish list. I had how much for just the planet. And then some kind soul sent it to me. I haven't purchased this. I, I did not pay a penny for this. They just sent it to me. It, it's so battered that like the, the cover is coming off, but a free book? 
that was on my wish list. Whoever this, did this to me, thank you so much. I am so grateful. I really wanted to read this. This is kind of a Star Trek musical. That's how they pitched it to me. Like um, Captain Kirk and the Enterprise and the Klingons really want this planet and there is like this very comedic dispute for the planet and it's kind of like a musical because there are songs in this and I cannot wait. And then the book that I probably enjoyed the most out of all of these. So there was a Star Trek reboot, reboot if you didn't know, uh, for, with J.J. Abrams that directed two movies and then there was a third with another director, um, which I have my stance about those movies because they're not, mm, they're kind of so-so, but they introduced me to uh, Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto, which are now two of my favorite actors in the world. Uh, so I'm very grateful for those movies. And so I, I bought uh, The Unsettling Stars, which talks about the characters from those movies. So you can see Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, and Zoe uh, by Alan Dean Foster, who is the one who wrote all the books for the Alien movies and uh, the, Star the Star Wars movies. This was great. This was so exciting. Uh, it's kind of like an old episode of Star Trek with the newest uh, members of the cast. So it was great. The, the writing was excellent. The descriptions were so rich. I love this. Uh, I have a video in which I vlog my experience with this and other books, so I'm going to link it down below. So these complete my Star Trek segment of this video and these are the last books that I bought. Actually, that's not true. Um, Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas is coming to my house. I don't know when. I had pre-ordered it and then they like sent the money back because I don't know there were some problems with the shipping so I had to reorder it and now I'm waiting for it I really want to read this but um, this is my latest Star Trek batch uh, these were all like two bucks each I'm so excited because they're all from the same collection so it's pretty on the shelf this is Star Trek The Final Nexus by Jean DeWeese this is The Shell Game by Melissa Crandall another woman and then this is the one I'm so excited about because the writer is a writer that I love. She wrote for Star Trek before and she's an amazing, like, Hugo and Nebula were winning um, sci-fi writer. This is Star Trek The Wrath of Khan by Wanda McIntyre, one of my favorite writers of sci-fi, like, old ass sci-fi. Uh, this is the book based on the second movie of the Star Trek franchise. So if you don't know, there is the original series, there is the um, New Generation and many other series. And then there are the movies about the original series with Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner and Deference Kelly. And I don't know, I, I think everybody says that this is one of the best Star Trek books that there are, aside from Spock's World, which I think is phenomenal. These, these, these are all the books that I bought in quarantine and they're all Star Trek themed. I am so happy. Like, th these are all just Star Trek. You have no idea how tall the pile of books is. Can I take a thumbnail? I don't think I can. So, we arrived at the end of this video. Socials, I have them, they're down below. Useful links will be, as always, down in the description. Please check them out. There are tons of petitions so you can sign 10 seconds and you help a lot of people out. Yeah, this is the end of the video. I hope you love my haul. These are just so many weird and wacky books, but I think I love them all. I think I will, I think I will. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.